Hello, everybody. Um, I'm not broadcasting from my own house today, as you can see. I am trying to resolve some internet issues, and hopefully, um, I get a response from Dr. Barry. Um, initially, we had decided that he would be the one to um, broadcast, but I did not hear from him to get a confirmation. So. I just went live because why? It's Sunday, it's five o'clock, and it's scheduled. And heck no, I'm not at home. <laughs> Hi guys, I see you guys are popping in. I'm so happy to see you, and hopefully Dr. Barry gets my message. If not, we'll just do what we do and have a chit chat, so. <sighs> guys, this is so different being in a public setting. You realize there are people watching me? <laughs> but I can't help it, right? We have to do what we have to do. Hi, Patty. How are you? <laughs> I want you guys, if I could do this, I wish I had remembered to bring my selfie stick because it would have been so much easier to just put my phone on its little stick and, and not have to try to hold it so still. Hi, Kathy. I'm so glad you guys showed up. This is freaking awesome. So I'm hoping that Dr. Barry pops in. This is strange because he knows we are at 5 o'clock and hi Emily and maybe he's just super busy. He hasn't given me any word to, to indicate there's an issue yet so we'll, we'll just give it a minute and see. Yeah, Helen, hey, I got things to talk about. Even if Dr. Barry is very busy, as a doctor he should be, um, hey, we can go. I've got, I've got things to discuss anyway. Did you guys, did any of you guys get to see uh, my live earlier with keto country cooking and some country gravy? Guys, it was so darn delicious. It rocks so hard. It was so good. So, anyway, I feel, <laughs> I've never done something like this before in a public place, but I told the waitress, she was all, hi, darling, can I get you something to eat? I was like, no, ma'am, I'm just going to sit Okay, Dr. Barry says he'll be ready in about five minutes. Hey, can I talk or can I talk? <laughs> All right, good. So let me tell you guys, I'm sitting here and the waitress is like, hey honey, can I get you anything? I said, you just need to bring me a drink and a glass of water and I'm gonna use up your table for like 30 minutes and um, I'm gonna tip you. Because I, you know, hey, she, this. You don't just go sit in somebody's section in a restaurant and not order food and um, make them lose out. So so she was gracious enough. She's like, what can I do for you? So what she did for me is bring me a beautiful glass of water with lemon, which I was so thankful for because I get so thirsty. I don't know why, but when I am running my mouth constantly, Oh, girl, I'm going to tell you what, Rebecca, that's already happened. My husband wanted to get out. He's like, let's get out of the house. I said, I need to try a different Wi-Fi spot. I need to see if I'm having internet issues. So, um, anyways, he's sitting at the bar in there watching sports and talking with his friends who actually asked me about keto. What? Guys, I'm having guy keto talk. Guys. So, anyways, I'm happy to have the water. Hi, Diana. How are you? And then also, hey, let me ask you guys. This is a good time. Is it too loud? Am I am I good here? Can you hear everything all right? I might even ask one of the servers to, to, to do me a favor because I feel so pretty today. I bought a new shirt, a smaller size. Hello, Samir. Yes. Hi, Kat. I'm so glad you guys are here. Hi, Lisa. You guys are amazing. Oh, and then look, I did get an adult beverage because I didn't finish the one I had last night. Oh, cool. I'm so good. Hi, Jim. We got a guy in here. Thank you. So, yeah, I'm I'm super stoked by this. Oh, thank you. My, my daughter said my hair looked a bit tired, but I was like, I need a cut in color. <laughs> and let me tell you, do you like my necklace and my earrings too? It's the oldest piece of store-bought jewelry that I own. 
Um, I think I'll wait on having that adult beverage until this is all over with because I'm nervous as well I'm nervous AF <laughs> I'm very nervous <laughs> oh you like the top of my blouse that's so cool like I said I want I want a server to stand up because this is such a cute country boho top it's so adorable it's got ruffles it feels so feminine and I just love it anyway so uh, hey here's a good idea too okay all right you're right I need to take a sip and relax me can you guys can you tell the difference do you feel my nervous energy going on here I'm like <laughs> You're right. It does work. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey, if you guys love and like, take a moment. I'm gonna, I'll just go ahead and get this out of the way. Guys, don't forget. <laughs> I don't know who's doing laughy faces, but I'm all about laughing right now. I feel very, people are looking at me around this restaurant like, what is she doing talking to her phone? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness so sip 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 ah oh, dr. Barry is here saved by the berry <laughs> I'm gonna add him in add yeah this worked out really well here he comes Totally different venue, right? And I'm still working on it. I'll do it. I'll be just, uh, I'm going to add him again. It says Addy. Nah. Hello, Nancy. Hi. How are you? I'm great. How's it going? It's going good. I'm on a different venue this week. Um, I'm actually out in public. As you can see behind me, there's all kinds of things going on. Excellent. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's really good. And I'm hoping that it resolves my glitching issues. I'm that's driving me nuts. Yes. So I thought I'll just try to hit a different spot and see if we can go from there. Good plan. Good plan. It's good to talk to you again. How's the group going? Steady grows, dude. Steady grows. Nice. Very nice. We're doing good. Um, released my first official YouTube video this week. Again, oh, very nice. good. I'm very pleased. Make sure and post a link so everybody can find it. I want to watch it. I'm, I'm getting them all over the place. Excellent. What are we talking about this week? Well, actually, I, I want to talk about, I have two subjects that I want to talk about, and then if you've got anything to add, and then we'll look at questions and then go from there. Sure, let's do um, it. I, okay, you recently covered exogenous ketones, yes? Yes, yes. Okay, so that is a big question for us. Um, I've, I've received several private messages this week. I've received um, just questions in our group. Um, are they good? Should we buy them? Do we need to buy into it? I, I have my own <clears throat> form, but I think it would be good if you explain. Yeah. Yes, no, yeah. That's a great, great topic. Let's talk about that. So okay. exogenous ketones are so seductive sounding because in, in, in the U.S. and in Canada, we love being able to take a magic pill or a magic powder and just have results because we took this powder or this pill. And exogenous ketones fit perfectly into that paradigm of, oh, you just take this and everything falls into place. And so that's for the average person in this group, that is absolutely not true whatsoever. For the average person in this group, exogenous ketones are a uniform and complete waste of money. They will, yes. not, they will not help you achieve your goals. They will not help you with anything. And in my YouTube video I posted on the YouTube channel, I said, you know, and then this is a, a true thing that, could, that someone could do. If a, if a young lady came into my office and said, oh, I want to get pregnant so bad, and I gave her an injection of HCG, and I said, wait an hour, then go in the bathroom and pee on the pregnancy stick and see what happens, right? And so she would come back out of the <laughs> – 
she would come back out of the restroom jumping for joy because the stick's positive, right? I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. And I'd be like, well, no, no, you're not pregnant. You're just peeing out. (laughs) (laughs) You're just peeing out HCG. That's all. And so that's exactly what the exogenous ketones do. They do put ketones in your bloodstream, but that's not the point of ketosis. The point of ketosis is to be in ketosis, just like the point of being pregnant. The point of being pregnant is not to pee out HCG. The point of being pregnant is to be pregnant, right? Exactly. And so if you're taking exogenous ketones, they absolutely do not put you into a state of ketosis. Absolutely. 100% they do not do that. They do put ketones. Thank you so much for clarifying. Yes. They do put ketones in your serum or in your blood. And they do put ketones are excreted into your urine. There's no doubt about that either. But that's not the point. The goal is not to turn the stick purple. The goal is to burn the fat on your booty and in your on your belly. That's the goal. So don't waste cool. your money on exogenous ketones. Okay, guys. Did you hear what Dr. Barry said? Here's the point, and I, I can't stress it enough. We do not need to buy into the product of, of these ketones. It's just they're just scams. You're being scammed. That's basically what we're you saying. You're yeah. being scammed. There's two, there's, and I think most of the people who are selling, well, okay, first of all, two things. If someone recommends that you should take exogenous ketones, you, your first question should be, oh, do you sell them? And if their answer is yes, then duh, they've got a, they've got a dog in the race, right? So you can't trust them. Not that they're untrustworthy, but anytime I'm about to make money on something, then it's the best thing in the world. That's just human nature, right? And so a, a lot of these people just signed up with the multi-level marketing company a month or two or three ago. And you know, as well as I do, if you're listening to this, you hate to be wrong and you hate to throw, throw money away. And so you're not ready to admit a month or two or three in, man, I've wasted money and signed up and this is, this is stupid. And, but I mean, I'm trying to make my money back and I'm trying to make it be a good thing, but it's really not. And so people can fool themselves. Good people who can really believe this is helping. Yeah, and case in point, I have one of our members who I've been talking to who, behind the scenes, spent $300 on oh. these ketones, $300, and she feels more, she feels so bad for just buying into it, you know? Right. And, you know, I, and really, she beat herself up because she, you know, got suckered into this thinking that it was going to really help. Right. She wants to do keto, and now she's straight keto, and I'm so happy good, for her. Good, good, good. But again, it just proves that point. Yeah, really the two biggest wastes of money if you're trying to lose weight with the ketogenic diet is to either A, buy exogenous ketones or B, join the gym. Neither Uh one of those help you lose weight. Neither one of those, they just don't. I'm sorry. Uh, Exercise is very, very good for you in hundreds of ways, but it's not going to help you lose weight. So if you want to lose weight, do the diet. Don't join the gym. If you want to lose weight, and be in ketosis, do the diet. Don't buy the exogenous ketones. Okay. Um, I think we I think we covered that. Now let me I'm gonna I'm gonna ask a question I just saw pop up. Devin Ahmad asked, does doing keto long term cause kidney damage? Yeah. Many doctors are saying it does. Yeah, that's a complete and utter myth. There is zero research that shows that eating a high-fat, low-carb diet does any damage to the kidneys whatsoever. Now, there, there might be a tiny bit of research that shows that eating a high-protein diet could lead to some kidney damage, but even that's probably not the truth at all. But now, we, uh-huh. do, we do know from experience and from hundreds of medical studies that eating a high carb diet and elevating your blood sugar and elevating your insulin level will absolutely destroy your kidneys. One of the leading causes of being on dialysis is type 2 diabetes. And type 2 diabetes is caused by a carb heavy diet that's so carb heavy that your pancreas can't deal with it, right? And so it, we have we have a bountiful amounts of research that shows that high carb will destroy your kidneys. We know that for a fact. But there is no research that shows no research. that fat hurts it at all. And really, there's very, very tiny amounts of research that shows that protein may or may not if, it, if you eat a super high amount of protein. So absolutely no. Low carb, high fat has nothing to do with kidney damage except to protect your kidneys from the carbs that you're not eating on the diet. The ketogenic diet has nothing to do with kidney damage except 
protecting your kidneys from the damage done by high carbs? I love that answer. I, I love that you cleared that up for us. Um, I want to talk about something, and I just saw another, the, one of the things I was going to ask you to talk about, and I saw somebody ask the same thing, so that works in perfectly. Can we talk about carb cycling and how that works with keto, and what are your thoughts on it? Yeah. I have my own thoughts about carb cycling or carb re-upping. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Well, I haven't seen any reason to do it. Um, I know some people are doing it and they feel like it, that it's maybe a, like a break from ketosis or something. But I, I mean, if you wanted to take a carb break or, or carb cycle once a year or twice a year, I think that's fine if you, if you think you need to do that. But I don't think there's any reason to, to think that you need to do that at all. I don't think there's any reason to do that. But if you want to, I think, it, you know, it's whatever. The ketogenic diet is so forgiving that you'll, you know, you'll immediately knock yourself out of ketosis if you eat carbs. But as soon as you stop eating the carbs, you'll go right back into ketosis. Right back so into ketosis. I don't think it's a big deal, but I absolutely don't think it's necessary at all. I, I thank you for saying that because I, I do not believe in knocking yourself out of ketosis for any reason. I don't think there's, I mean, unless, I mean, the most extreme circumstances pop up and for some reason somebody shoves a slice of bread in your mouth. <laughs> you know, I am not all about that whatsoever. Right. Um, I do have a theory, though. I, I mean, this is just my theory. Tell me. And, uh, it's good. okay, my theory, I have a couple of them, is that I love to eat clean. That's, it's my preferred style of eating. And I think it's kind of crazy that I would prefer this after all the bad eating I've done all these years. But it, it, it's, it's the thing I prefer. I just like high fat, moderate protein, and good veggies. And But then I call this my carb, my keto update, where, like, say I take the weekend and decide to eat things I don't normally eat, like fathead pizza or a mug cake with mousse in it or, or extra vegetables and stuff like that. Now, mind you, I'm upping my carbs when I do that, okay? I am upping my carbs maybe once a week, maybe once every other week. And you know what? My scale always moves after I do a little increased keto-approved carb. Mm -hmm. As long as it's keto-approved mm -hmm. and you keep them low all the time, but then you give yourself a little boost, maybe in extra vegetables or something of that nature, it helps me personally lose weight what do you think about that well i think there's probably a subset of people who have because we all have different gut bacteria right and i think that's probably has a lot to do with what you're talking about i think some people do wonderfully on a on a meat heavy or just an exclusive carnivore diet whereas another subset of people probably do a little better with a more vegetable heavy ketogenic diet I, yeah i don't have a problem yeah, yeah, with that at all I will tell you, Dr. Barry, and here comes my big thing, you know, I, I waited until Friday and I did message you and let you know, but you know, we have talked about how some people, like you said, they're more carnivorous, they, that they're, they are geared to eat mostly meat and fat and not as many vegetables. Well, I think I fall into the vegetable thing because I put a green challenge out and I did say I was challenging you just a little bit, but not in a bad way. Yeah, I understand. I'm going to up my veggies this week. And do you know that I lost six pounds in one week just by eating the vegetables that basically you recommended? Yeah. said, hey, you can yeah. eat these vegetables as much as you like and not worry about them. Mm -hmm. So I put those leafy dark greens into my – I kept my fat first. Right. I added those dark leafy greens to my diet for a week, and I took another six pounds, which put me at actually 30 pounds down in 53 days dude excellent so, that's awesome look, do i not look like i'm glowing yeah you really do so you've lost 53 <laughs> total is that right do you've I? lost 53 30 pounds, 30 pounds in 53 days ah 30 pounds in 53 days that's awesome that's awesome yeah that's wonderful but yeah i have no problem with doing a more vegetable heavy keto i don't think you can do a vegetarian keto i just think that's probably no. impossible to do uh, but definitely a, a more vegetable heavy keto is a, is an alternative for some people. Yeah. So, um, it, it's working out good because we've got a lot of people doing that, increasing their grains. And I just, I think that they're so dense and nutrient, it's getting a little loud in here. People are starting to come in for supper and the tables and the chairs are moving like crazy. 
Um, but anyways, but we have increased our vegetable intake and we kept our wow, fat intake up. Um, I think they're getting ready for a big party up there because they're moving a lot of tables and chairs. It's really loud in here for me. Um, I'm going to go and ask you about this real quick. I'm going to get off subject here. What about keto for migraines? Mm. So the ketogenic diet is a very, very uninflammatory diet. And for many, many women, the inflammation caused by the diet they eat increases both the frequency of migraine headaches and the intensity of migraine headaches. Now, make no mistake, migraine headaches have a large hormonal issue with them. There's also a genetic component with migraine headaches. There's no doubt about either of those things. But I have uniformly seen women who have often severe migraine headaches when they go strictly ketogenic their migraine headaches get less severe and they happen le less often and i've had you know i have women who take topamax to try to prevent the migraine headaches and i've had several of them just stop taking it not not refill it when it came time for refills because their headaches were so minor and so in, infrequent they didn't need it anymore and so i definitely think it helps i don't think it's going to cure it i don't think it'll cancel cancel the hormonal component of it i don't think it will cancel the genetic component of it, but I think it will cancel the inflammatory component, which for some women is a huge percentage of why they have migraine headaches. Yeah. I have a friend who suffered from migraine headaches forever and a day, and actually I know quite a few. And, you know, sometimes it's and, and a lot of times. My daughter, for instance, food she eats triggers migraines, eliminate the food, eliminate the problem. Exactly. You know? Keto you know, just really helps with a lot of the elimination stuff. Right. You know, that's going on. Um, I have another person here who is asking. I saw some really good questions come by. Um, let's talk electrolytes. I mean, I know that we're a little further along in this journey, but I do have a lot of new members who are just now starting out making that decision to live keto. Um, how can you keep your electrolytes really good and high while you're doing the, uh, the keto diet? Because we have to keep them up all the time. Yeah, and so there, if you're eating a good, strict ketogenic diet, after the first week or two, you don't have to worry about your electrolytes at all. The ketogenic diet has more potassium in it and more magnesium in it than the standard American diet. So... A year ago, when you guys were all eating the stupid American diet or the stupid Canadian diet, were you worried about your it. were you worried about your magnesium and potassium then? No, you weren't worried about it, and you were fine. Stop worrying about electrolytes. The only issue with electrolytes on the ketogenic diet is the first week or two or three, when you're peeing out all the inflammation that's been in your body. Sometimes you can pee out too many electrolytes, but after you've stabilized on the ketogenic diet. It is much richer in electrolytes and vitamins and minerals and nutrients and collagen than any other diet in the world. There's no reason to worry about electrolytes. There's no need to take a supplement. You don't have to do any of that. Once you get keto, fully keto adapted a month or six weeks in, you can forget about the electrolytes because you're, you're going to be eating all the electrolytes you need. And I'm going to 100% agree with Dr. Barry because... Um, here we are in week eight. We're going into week nine. Um, when I first started out, and, and if you're new, yeah, you can take your magnesium sublet. You can use your uh, light salt. You can eat potassium-rich foods like avocados. Yeah. Um, and you really, uh, you just, you, you drink lots of that fluids to keep you balanced out, put that salt all over everything. Right. Um, here we are in week nine, and I forget sometimes now, because I, I was on the habit of taking my magnesium every mm -hmm. single day. Right. But you know what? I actually have started forgetting. It's like, it, it just, I'll take my vitamin D. I take my CoQ10. Right. Uh, I take my omega uh, fish oil. Sure. And those are the only three supplements I take. And, and I, I think it's fine. It. I think it's fine to keep sure. taking your supplements. Like, for instance, if you tend to suffer from constipation, keep taking your magnesium citrate. If you tend to suffer from insomnia, keep taking your magnesium. That's totally fine. But it's just like in the video I posted on my YouTube channel today about bananas are being a, a terrible source of potassium. The, the ketogenic diet, the, all the foods are so rich in potassium, you never need to eat a banana. It's silly. <clears throat> Meat, exactly. Meats are some of the most potassium-rich foods on the planet. If you're eating pork, beef, chicken, fish, all of those things are jacked up, loaded with potassium. 
okay? If you're eating green leafy vegetables much at all, you're getting tons of magnesium. So to think that, oh, I, I, this, this diet is somehow deficient, I'll have to take a, a, you know, a supplement, that's dumb. No, no, the ketogenic diet is the diet for the human body. It gives you everything you need. It gives you infinitely more than the stupid American or the stupid Canadian diet ever did. Yeah. Okay. Now, here's a simple question, and I'll let you have at it. What do you think about – I'm going to add one part to this. Uh, what, what's his name? Um, says – Patty Rogers says, what do you think about the egg fast? And to that, I will add, what do you think about the egg fast and the beef fast? What do you think about yeah. the fast? I think that being carnivore for a, 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 sm a short period of time is probably a very wise initial step. Uh, I've been playing around with, with eating carnivore for a, a couple of weeks, and I'm having great results. Uh, if you want to do a beef fast for a week to get started, I think that's fine. I think an egg fast is fine because basically you're being a carnivore either way you're going. But uh, a better, you know, a broader way to do that would be to do a meat fast. Just do meat, nothing but meat for a week or two, and just see how you feel after that. Most people lose a, a stunning amount of weight very quickly, and they like inflammatory conditions like that knee arthritis or that shoulder that won't get better. They're magically better all of a sudden, and meat has all the, the electrolytes you could ever need in it. And so you really, okay. yeah, so I'm, I'm well, fine with either one. I think either one is a great thing to do at least for a short period of time. Okay, for a short period of time, because, but what about, uh, now I'm just going to, my, my thought press, my next thought is, but what about too much protein? Are yeah. you not, if you eat too much protein, are you going to burn it like carbs? Right, and that's that's the, the only potential thing, is if you're eating chicken breast, you're going to be getting too much protein, and so never do I advocate eating a lean cut of meat. I never advocate that. You need to be eating ribs, ribeye, you need to be eating oxtail you need to be eating brisket you need to be eating butt you need to be eating fat heavy and so like with an egg the yolks are full of fat right and so you're getting you're getting fat and protein kind of in balance but i think the human body's well aware of what to do with meat i think we've been eating it for hundreds of thousands of years i think our body knows exactly how to process that and when you're eating meat you have to remember you're eating zero carbs and what bumps your insulin quicker than anything is carbs and so if you, eat, uh -huh. if you eat a meal that has one carb or two carbs and then has a lot of protein, yeah, that's really going to spike your insulin, right? But if you eat a, a heavy fat protein meal with zero carbs, which a ribeye steak has no carbs, then you're not going to bump the, your insulin level as readily because there were literally zero carbs in that meal. And so I think at that point when you go zero carb, which is what carnivore is, you don't have to worry as much about eating too much protein. Okay, well, you know what? That comes from, straight from Dr. Barry. And, you know, it, it makes sense because even when – now, I because I, I'm, I'm just kind of against meat fasts or just, you know, these – I don't like fad type things. I guess that's my old school stuff. And I'm older than most of you all out there, okay? <laughs> I'm the old lady who looks rocking. <laughs> but anyway, uh, but it does make sense because – you know, when my appetite absolutely went away, like four, five, and six, all I could focus really, only thing that I could stay focused on was high fat protein. I dropped my carbs like nobody's business. Right. Just because I didn't feel like I even wanted them. Yep. You know? And I've had, and then I, go ahead, go ahead. And then I kind of balanced out a little bit, and then I started like, okay, now I want, now I need my vegetables. Right. You know? Right. I, I got some progress in the first one and a half weeks, no progress in the second and a half weeks, stalled on the third week, and then put my veggies back in, and bam, down again. Yeah. And I've had multiple yeah, people tell me. Listen to your body. Yeah, listen to your body, definitely. But I've had multiple people tell me that when they stalled out and they couldn't figure out why, that they would just do a week of, of carnivore, just a week of meat, and that would kick them back in, and they'd be going again. And so I think that's always an option to do an egg fast or a meat fast. And it can be beef, it can be any meat, really. I don't think it matters what meat. Uh, but but I think a, a week of that, for a lot of people who've stalled, can really kick them back into to heavy, heavy ketosis. Let's do one more question, Nancy, and then I've got a, another thing i got to run to. That's great, because my, my phone is going dead, too. Guys, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to go one more question. Um, let's see. Okay, let's see. Uh, 
can my muscle pain and weakness be due to not enough protein if it's not my electrolytes? This is from Linda Schimmel Hardman. So it, most people need anywhere from half a gram to one gram of protein per kilogram of body weight a day. And, and, and some people don't need that much. And so if you're eating, say if you weigh, you know, uh, uh, what, 100 kilos, so you need 50 to 100 grams of, and, and 100 kilos, that's like 220 pounds. So you can uh-huh. do the math based on that. But so for me, I would need probably 100, anywhere from 70 to 110 grams of protein a day. And that, I'm a big guy. And so for the average petite woman, you don't need anywhere near that much protein. And very all the, all the workout gurus and all those kind of people will tell you to eat way more protein than you actually need. Your body is more than able to make protein out of the stuff you eat if you're eating the amino acids. And so I wouldn't, I doubt very seriously that's what it is. You maybe should see your doctor and get some lab work checked and make sure everything's okay. Well, you know what, Dr. Barry, thank you for answering that. And I know that you have, your Sundays are just as jam-packed as your Monday through Friday. They are. And I thank you for answering the questions. And I see some questions scrolling through here that I know that I can answer. Yeah. And I'll check and, back later, and I'll try to answer any questions that I that I can. And I know Nancy always does that. So if you guys have questions, leave them in the comments. Leave a good short question. Try not to write a paragraph because that, that just kills our time. But try to condense it, if you can, into a very short question. And Nancy and I always try to answer every question that we can. And as always, keep inviting your friends to join Nancy's group because there's uh, this is really my favorite group. Nobody really does it like this because you guys are so non-judgmental and you really help each other and that's the way it should be. And then you've got Nancy. I mean, how can you beat that? And guys, if you find value in this, if you appreciated Dr. Barry taking time, please give us all those thumbs, those hearts, those likes. Share, 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 share to your groups, share to your friends, share to your family. Put it out there on public. And yeah. as Dr. Barry goes off, please just send him off with a lot of hearts, a lot of welcomes. And when you go check him out on YouTube, I'm telling you guys, this man has so much information. I Let me tell you, I just posted a video today. Real people. Thank you, thank you. Let me tell you, I did a YouTube video today about bananas and so if any of you guys watching this video have a, a family member who thinks that bananas are a good source of potassium or that they're really healthy and you should eat them every day you need to share that video with them because it, i try to explain in as common sense detail as i can why bananas are not the health food that you've been taught that they are they each banana has three teaspoons of sugar every banana three teaspoons of sugar and so you can forget ketosis uh. that day if you eat a banana and so there are so many better sources of potassium. <laughs> Go check out the video and share it with your mama. Thanks, Ben. See you next time. <laughs> Dr. Barry, that was perfect. You know what? I don't do the bananas. I do the banana extract. It totally satisfies me. <laughs> um, and it shows that Dr. Barry has froze and I don't know why it's been such an awesome thing um Dr. Barry I don't I don't mean to cut you out but I'm gonna all right guys yes I'm gonna just stay on for a few minutes guys because my phone is um it hasn't said low battery yet so it's good that direction but hey if I can answer a few of your questions that I do know the answers for, I would much rather answer them um, this direction. That way I could answer like a blanket answer instead of typing each one out individually. So um, from Kathy Hayden Eldridge, who says, are eggs included when doing the meat fast? Yes. Eggs are protein. Any protein such as beef, chicken, fish, uh, game, whatever, eggs, yes. Uh, livers, meats, you know, those things. Hey, this is the drink, you guys. I, did you notice I was sipping the whole time? I was like, I almost got through all of it. <laughs> I'm going to really have to tip this little waitress here. I swear she was so sweet. But let me answer a couple of questions I, that I know that I could answer. Um, um, how about bacon for the week of meat? Bonnie Argan McPhee. 
bacon is meat. If you can handle bacon for a solid week, there are people who do do the bacon diet. They have done the bacon fast. This stuff is crazy to me, guys. It, you know, but hey, like Dr. Barry said, maybe I'm being a little too narrow-minded, and I am not afraid to take off my blinders. Maybe I should face the sun a little bit. Oh, it brightens it up a little here. Um, when you do a bacon fast or an egg fast or a beef and butter fast, it freaks me out. Maybe just because I'm still kind of like, wow, that's just a little heavy duty for me. But if you're in a stall and that's what you, you know, if it's keto approved, why not? I mean, who's to say, honestly, who's to say if it's keto approved, you can't pick one food and decide that's what you want to eat for four days without even a fast. Come on now. Um, I happen to love, you know, um, bacon myself. And I could easily eat bacon for like two or three days in a row and nothing else. Maybe my scale would go down. Maybe it won't, you know? So, again, you know, if it's keto approved food and you really enjoy it and you feel like maybe the other foods you were eating were putting you in a stall and you just want to focus on one particular food for maybe one, two, I personally would not recommend more than three days for myself unless Dr. Barry said it's okay to eat meat for a week like he just did. I, I'm not a doctor, so I would not personally recommend that. But he, he approved it, so I'm going to move along here. And guys, I see all of your comments. I see all of your appreciation. I just want you guys to know that I appreciate you too. Um, I do grass-fed beef and butter. I was skeptical, skeptical, but it worked for just a few days. I think the point to take away from um, a beef and butter fast or an egg fast or anything is just it's a temporary tool. I love using the word tool. It's a tool to help you bust through a stall. I wouldn't recommend it as a way of eating. I mean, ugh because it just sounds so yucky. There's so many wonderful keto foods to enjoy out there. But if you're having a stall and you feel like you should do a fast, do a fast for one, two, three days. And if it breaks your stall, then pick up where you left off and again, adjust, modify, and or, and or eliminate and listen to your body. I have to, I just have to keep saying, listen to your body. Okay. Guys, I don't know, I, my phone's not low. I made it through the challenge. The light's coming through beautifully. And I just need, I need, I need to get a server. Oh, there's a manager right behind me, I see him. I need him to do something because I bought my celebration outfit. Excuse me, sir, give me a favor. I'm doing this live here from y'all's place. It's all about weight loss and celebration today, and I've lost 30 pounds. I have a new outfit on. Would you mind holding my phone for me just to give him a, a whole shot of me? Sure. Okay, so you hold it, and I'll stand here, because you guys get to see me celebrate. My country look. Thank you. Thank you so much. Right. That was the wonderful manager here at Chili's, you guys, in Lindale, Texas. I, I got my hair a little wonky. Oh, thank you guys. You're so awesome. But I'm so thrilled. I feel so wonderful. Okay. Question five weeks and still have the awful keto breath. If you look in group, guys, I have posted... Um, I'll just make a post about it, okay? Because I think other people have asked me. But your breath should balance out. Try drinking, getting plenty of fluids in, and eating your veggies and your meat, and not just uh, focusing on a lot of protein. Uh, I, I know that if you're high in your protein, if it's higher than, say, there, I'm trying to get out of shadow. Uh, if you're high in protein, and your breath can get some wonky smell to it. <sighs> Thank you, guys. All right. My husband's sitting over in the bar, y'all. He's watching NASCAR. Turn left. Turn left. Turn left. <laughs> but I am gonna go enjoy him and see how far, how many beers he's had while I was gone. 
he never gets a day off work. So I'm going to go spend some time with him. I love y'all. And thank you for everything, you guys. Let's catch up. Get ready, guys. Tomorrow is week nine. We just wrapped up week eight. We're going in. We're going strong. I've already got my thing ready. And, oh, what do you guys think about this? How about tomorrow I post week nine, and then for Monday I'm going to post a special photo in week nine that says weigh in Monday. Because that's what we do, right? We always give everybody our weight, our stats on Monday. So we're going to call Monday weigh in Monday. And then on Tuesday, I'm going to start putting in another picture on Tuesday. Transformation Tuesday. Let's do all of our pictures and fun stuff like that. You can still ask your questions or whatever, but we can also add in the transformations we've had. The little, the progress that we've made. And then we'll do something for Wednesday. We'll do something for Thursday. And we'll do something for Friday. And then we'll rock the weekends out. We're going to change things up a little bit. But we're still going to stay strong, stay as a group, stay together, and be successful. Keto strong, keto on, fat first, moderate protein, low carb. Get you some, guys. Love y'all. Thanks.